Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com. Dwyer, boxing news on Roku. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. The Pauli Malinaji, Adrian Broner fight just ended. For the gamblers you were taken care of, we did not win a jackpot. Pauli Malinaji did not pull the upset. Right? I had Malinaji at plus 750 to win the fight. He lost by split decision according to the official results of the fight. But the gambler should have been taken care of on the hedge because the fight went the distance. And so you were comfortably over the nine and a half as recommended in the pre-fight video. In my opinion, this was a close fight. Let me just put it to you this way. Here's what I believe you need to know going forward. Adrian Broner is slow against a guy who operates behind a jab, who throws volume, who could move around the ring. I know the guys on Showtime disagree with me. Understand, my opinion is just one out there in the wilderness. But after three rounds, I had Pauli Malinaji winning this fight. Three rounds to none. Now keep in mind, I wasn't a disinterested viewer. I was rooting for Pauli Malinaji. But let's talk about the holes in Adrian Broner's game because, quite frankly, they were exposed tonight. First, as Adrian Broner comes forward, he's plotting. He's flat-footed. He doesn't have mobile power. Just like we discussed in the pre-fight video, he can't leap in and pin Pauli Malinaji on the ropes. Right? He's trying to walk down Malinaji, and he's trying to do it without volume. This is not Antonio Margarito fighting Sergio Martinez back in the day. This is not a guy throwing volume and just overpowering you. This is not James Kirkland today. Rather, this is a guy who's very precise with his punches. I'll give him credit on the accuracy. He's very precise, right? But unfortunately, when his opponent is moving, he can't close the distance until the later rounds. Of the first five rounds of this fight, I gave Malinaji four of the five, right? I didn't think it was that close. Malinaji was doing whatever he wanted. He was able to come in and throw combinations. He was able to repeatedly pepper Adrian Broner's body. Now, Malinaji isn't a puncher. He came in with only seven knockouts. But the point is, he also didn't hit the canvas. He was outworking Adrian Broner. According to Showtime's statistics, and think about this, let's put it in perspective. In a 12-round fight, Pauli Malinaji threw more than 300 more punches than Adrian Broner. Think about that, right? If he out threw Broner by 20 punches around, he would only have a 240 punch advantage, right? Adrian Broner's volume, quite frankly, just isn't there. And the mobile power, the ability to move around the ring and throw punches, the gifts that Floyd Mayweather has, Broner doesn't have. There's an interview here online of Nassim Richardson, Bernard Hopkins' trainer, and Nassim claims that Adrian Broner is an offensive juggernaut, whereas Floyd Mayweather is a defensive juggernaut. With all due respect to Nassim Richardson, I don't know what puncher he's talking about. Right, Broner only threw 524 punches this entire fight. You want to know how many jabs Broner landed? And view jabs as a way to touch the other guy from distance. 
View jabs as a way to win the slow rounds. Adrian Broner in this fight only landed 32 jabs. That's 32 jabs over 12 rounds. That's less than three jabs a round. Now, Paulie Malignaggi moved. The movement clearly gave Broner problems. I'm guessing members of Adrian Broner's own family had him losing two of the first three rounds. Right? The movement is a problem. Now, Malignaggi didn't move as much as he did when he was younger. At times, he actually stayed in the pocket. Now, I understand Malignaggi can take a punch, but it's noteworthy that Adrian Broner is known as a big puncher. Malignaggi was close to him for much of this fight, certainly the last half of the fight. And while Pablo Cano was able to knock Paulie Malignaggi down, Adrian Broner, in my opinion, never got Malignaggi in serious trouble. Malignaggi at times even drops his hands, right? Broner, understand, he has hand speed. I'm not saying he doesn't have hand speed, but there's a difference between having hand speed and fighting fast, right? Broner is a guy who needs you in front of him, not moving, right? If you're moving, his volume drops, right? He then tries to stalk you, but understand he's not that elusive. Paulie Malignaggi. In 12 rounds, landed 120 jabs. Folks, that's 10 jabs a round. Now, let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. You know, in baseball, there's a rule. Tie goes to the runner. Right? You know, um, if I hit first base at the same time that, that the first baseman does, I get a base hit. Now, in boxing, and I'll agree... The 70s were a bit ridiculous, but there was an old adage. Paulie Malignaggi said it in a post-fight interview. You have to beat the champ to take his title, right? You can't nick it. You have to beat the champ to take his title. I didn't see that in this fight. At a minimum, if you're an Adrian Broner fan, you have to ask yourself how Broner in some books was a greater than 10 to 1 favorite and yet took Paulie Malignaggi's title by split decision. Let me also say too, there's always one scorecard that makes no sense whatsoever. Given Broner's lack of volume, given the fact that Broner didn't even work his way in, he's just trying to walk down Malignaggi. He's not even trying to jab his way in. Right? 32 jabs in 12 rounds. He's literally just trying to walk down Pauli Malignaggi. Right? Given Broner's lack of activity, this is a Canelo level of activity. Given his lack of activity, there simply is no way that any judge watching this fight could have Adrian Broner winning the fight by six rounds as the third judge did. Keep in mind, one judge has Malignaggi 115-113. Let's do the math. One judge has Malignaggi winning by two rounds, right? This third judge has Malignaggi losing by six rounds. Absurd. How close is the fight? The third judge has Broner winning 115-113. 13. Right, so if you bought a Broner ticket, Broner to win, at 10 to 1 or higher odds, I say congratulations, you could have made out just as well taking the straddle we suggested, which was the over hedged against Malignaggi to win the fight. And quite frankly, I have to say, as someone who bet on Malignaggi, I felt ripped off when they announced the decision. Right? I didn't think Broner did enough to take the title. Might be sour grapes on my part. I will concede Adrian Broner came on 
you know, um, in the uh, seventh and eighth rounds and the ninth round, I thought that was Broner's best set of rounds. But Malinaji then came back. And all I'm saying is, when's the last time you've watched the fight? Let's get real here for a second. Where a champion throws more than 300 punches, then a challenger does not get knocked down, does not get cut up, doesn't even get badly hurt, and still loses his title in his hometown. Finally, let's talk about Broner at 147 pounds. Broner says he wants the fans to decide who he's going to fight next. Now, I don't say this lightly. People need to think it through. If Broner had such a hard time, and he had a very hard time, catching up to Pauli Malinaji, right? And if Broner was unable to hurt Malinaji, right? Malinaji's not reeling even when he gets hit flush with some punches. What happens if Broner fights someone who could outmove him and probably has the hand speed advantage, certainly throws punches in bunches better than Broner and has a jab in Amir Khan, for example, right? Broner's power is not the kind of power that he can leap across the ring and hit you with it. Let me also point out, too, some things were disturbing here, right? Broner lands his right hand repeatedly in the fight. Look at the tape. He's landing that right hand, especially in the seventh, eighth, and ninth rounds. You know what? That right hand didn't have the high octane on it. I didn't feel like I was watching a really heavy puncher. I didn't feel like I was watching Andre Berto or Victor Ortiz land heavy punches, right? I'm as long-time viewers know, I suspect Broner's left-handed. I suspect his best punch is that left hook up front. And that if you play your cards right, you don't have to worry about Broner's jab. Don't believe me. Just look at the compu box numbers. You don't have to worry about his jab. And you might not have to worry that much about his right hand. Let me go one step further. If you move... Adrian Broner's a slow starter. You could bank the first three rounds. Right now, Paulie Malinaji doesn't have that big of a punch. But I believe we all know there are guys out there who do. I mentioned Victor Ortiz earlier. Right? There are some guys at 147 with one punch knockout power. Broner is a master chess player. When Pauly slowed down and couldn't move in the later rounds, when he was tired, let's remember he's 32, Broner started having success, started landing that uppercut, started playing chess. A guy like Victor Ortiz, who's a switch, in other words, Ortiz, when he wants, can try to fight you inside, but he can also take a step back and fight you outside. A guy like that, a guy like Timothy Bradley, another guy who's mobile, right? Mobile guys will continue to give Adrian Broner a hard time. I know I have a lot of Adrian Broner fans watching my video. My point to you is simply, Broner won the fight, officially. But let's get real. It's a split decision. The over held, and the over wasn't that low. It was nine and a half rounds. Right? Pauli Malinaji went the distance. Right? If you're an Adrian Broner fan, how do you explain the number of jabs your guy got hit with throughout the fight? How do you explain the number of body punches he got hit with throughout the fight? How do you explain his inability to cut the ring off on Pauli Malinaji? for several rounds, right? Broner is a guy who, quite frankly, is widely viewed as one of the very best in the sport. I myself have him on my pound-for-pound -pound list. But I have to say, at this stage of his career, he's overrated. 
right? He, you know, shouldn't be a 10 to 1 favorite, really, against any top contender at 147 pounds. He hasn't shown me that he can leap across the ring and hit a man. He hasn't shown me that he has the foot speed to cut off the ring. He looks a little bit flat-footed. I think he would have a problem against the Floyd Mayweather. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.